Heartbreak for Australia and probably a sigh of relief for France as they managed to squeeze out a 2-1 win over the Socceroos in a game where VAR definitely took the spotlight in a couple of decisions. Janish Mihalik here with me for this one. Janish, now let's talk about France because before the tournament, despite what happened at the Euros, I believed the hype. I believed in France. I was one of those that probably even called them a favorite. And I know Australia were put there to frustrate France, but I expected them to find a breakthrough and not have to rely on how they managed to get those two goals. Uh, I think you're right, but how do you do that when you lack creativity everywhere? How do you do that? How do you when lack that creativity with that midfield and that front three? Well, but, but let, let's look at that midfield. They're all the same, uh, right? If you have uh, Kante, who, by the way, and Golo Kante, you're holding midfielder in that for the most part, was the best player for France, easily. You know, if you look at that goal, uh, the first initial uh, goal for a penalty, I mean, he was the one that released Pogba. Wonderful little, uh, little move. Uh, you look at Kante, Pogba, Tolisso. Uh, and even if you bring Matuidi, I mean, does that scream creativity for you? They're all very good players, players that have a good range of play, players that are physical, but they're not the players, none of them, not one of them is a leader. And even Paul Pogba, let's look at him. I mean, when was the last time that you truly saw him consistently play well? That was at Juventus. I mean, he wasn't good. And yes, we saw glimpses because he was involved in both goals uh, he was given the second goal but in the build-up for both he was good but we don't see that consistently and even I'll go as far as uh, Juventus he was still a role player there he's played well but a role player so you look at the midfield that didn't really supply the front three uh, Griezmann didn't have anything to do yes you have front three with a lot of movement but none of them really knew where they were going right so uh, uh, I think that's a big problem for France. It's that midfield. It's good on one hand because they're physical, but in terms of creativity and leadership, who's pulling the strings there? Could you pick one player? You'd hope the coach. I mean, well, Deschamps made some tactics and changes in the sense that he took off Dembele and Antoine Griezmann. I know we spoke about this a little off camera and you were like, what is he doing? Why did you not like that? Well, because if I'm Australia, it's 1-1. If I'm Australia and I see Griezmann coming off, uh, I'm thinking that's good. He didn't have to make those two moves. He changed the shape. First of all, for Didier Deschamps, he loves playing 4-4-2. He became a little bit more flexible and changed that to 4-3-3, right? And then within the game, when it's 1-1, he goes to 4-3-1. But I would just put Giroud there and keep Mbappe and, and Griezmann. You don't have to change the entire shape. I just didn't understand that at 1-1. And if you watch closely for like 10 minutes after the change, it was actually Australia that was coming into the game a little bit more. So you look at uh, friends that won. Not sure how much they knew about that. They're just simply a better team, which we knew. We knew Australia is one team that can grind it out. But uh, you take the three points, but again, very, very unimpressive. All right, so unimpressive from France and heartbreak for Australia. Definitely France probably had lady luck on their side, at least for this game. Well, for more from the World Cup, make sure to tune in to ESPN FC on ESPN+.